So, how can we learn about 50 polyatomic ions in less than 15 minutes? Uh, a few years ago, a student brought in a tool to help learn polyatomic ions, and it's a little statement, and this is going to help us learn about 40, and then there's going to be about 10 more really important ones for us to memorize. But the uh, phrase was, Nick, the camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. And it's important that you can spell these, especially the word Phoenix, sometimes tough for some students to spell. So it's Nick the Camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. This helps us learn something about our polyatomic ions. Uh, Nick will help us memorize the formula and the charge on nitrate. Nitrate is nitrogen with oxygen, but sometimes the question comes up, how many oxygen are present? Well, if we go to the word nick, we see that there are three consonants, so that tells us the number of oxygen. There's one vowel, so that tells me that it is a minus one charge, and what I'm learning here by way of this polyatomic ion based on nick is that that is nitrate. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. For camel, this is going to tell us about carbonate. Carbonate is carbon with oxygen. Camel has one, two, three consonants, so it's CO3, three oxygens, two vowels, so carbonate has a negative two charge. Nick the camel ate a clam. Clam tells us about chlorate. Chlorate is chlorine with oxygen. One, two, three oxygens, one vowel, minus one charge. Chlorate, the polyatomic ion, is ClO3 with a minus one charge. Supper. Supper tells us about the polyatomic ion sulfate. Sulfate is SO, one, two, three, four consonants, two vowels, minus two charge. There's sulfate. Phoenix. This tells us about phosphate. Again, the reason for the importance of the spelling, there's one, two, three, four consonants, phosphorus with four oxygens, and three vowels, so it's a minus three charge. So Nick the Camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Uh, let's us get started with five polyatomic ions, but we can take those five polyatomic ions, and if we know a few basic rules with regard to polyatomic ions and, and how charges can, can vary uh, on the less electronegative element in this case, we know that if there's nitrate, we also have nitrite. Well, if you know nitrate, nitrite is one less oxygen, same charge. So if we know nitrate, we should also know nitrite. With regard to chlorate, we actually learn a few more polyatomic ions. From, from chlorate, we also have one less oxygen, like we talked about, ClO2, with a minus one charge. That's chlorite. But there's even chlorine with a, with a different charge, and that is ClO with a minus charge, and that's called hypochlorite, polyatomic ion. And we have one more oxygen, and that is ClO4 with a minus one charge, and that one is called perchlorate. So from simply learning the word clam to do chlorate, we learn four polyatomic ions. Um, in earlier courses, you probably, or early part of uh, your chemistry studies, you probably studied the different charges um, with regard to chlorine, uh, maybe a little bit of, of photoelectric uh, electron spectroscopy, explaining some sublevel shielding and different things that goes on. So chlorine actually takes on a lot of different charges when it's with the more electronegative oxygen. Uh, in this case, a 1, 3, uh, 5, and a 7 charge, uh, depending on the polyatomic ion. That's a little bit earlier in coursework. Uh, sulfate, 
We also have SO3, one less oxygen, same charge, and that's called sulfite. So there's a few more polyatomic ions thrown in. Polyatomic ions that have a charge other than negative one, for instance, carbonate. We can put a hydrogen with the carbonate and make it HCO3. Hydrogen's in group 1A, so it has a plus one charge. So that polyatomic ion takes on a, a negative one charge, and we call that old terminology bicarbonate, or probably more up-to-date, hydrogen carbonate as a polyatomic ion. So again, because it was a minus two charge, we can stick a hydrogen there with it, and we can have a polyatomic ion with hydrogen present. Hydrogen's a plus one, changes the charge by one, bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate. Same thing's true for both the sulfite and the sulfate. We can have HSO3 minus, which would be hydrogen sulfite or bisulfite. Or we can have HSO4 minus, which is hydrogen sulfate or bisulfate. Uh, with phosphate, changes things just a little bit. Phosphate, remember, was a negative three charge. So for phosphate, we can have HPO4. Now, hydrogen being a plus one, that's a minus two. But there's also H2PO4, two hydrogens, each plus one. Uh, phosphate was a minus three, so that ion, polyatomic ion, has a minus one charge. Because there's two different hydrogen phosphates, we call this top one monohydrogen phosphate, and H2PO4 is dihydrogen phosphate. All right, so a few more. So you can see all of a sudden we started with five and we've increased quite a bit. There's a few more of these we can do, uh, but what I'm going to call family association, if you know the location of uh, your elements here on the periodic table. Uh, there's a few more that we can learn. Going back to the chlorate family, we had ClO4 minus, ClO3 minus, ClO2 minus, and ClO minus. Perchlorate, up top, chlorate, chlorite, and hypochlorite. We also can do the same thing with regard to bromates. We have perbromate, bromine being also a halogen right below chlorine on the periodic table. BrO3 minus uh, would be bromate. BRO2 minus uh, would be bromite, and BRO minus would be hypobromite. Uh, we can do the same thing with iodine, per iodate, iodate, iodite, and hypoiodite. Could do the same thing with astatine as well if we wanted to increase the number of these. Notice we don't include fluorine in this list, and it has to do with, with the nature of our polyatomic ions. In all of these, oxygen is more electronegative. So you've probably learned in earlier studies about the electronegativity of fluorine. In this case, the oxygen is taking on the minus two charge, so the halogen, as I talked about earlier, uh, has different uh, charges, and again, that has to do with... Uh, a little bit of the electron configuration and the orientation of the electrons around that central halogen. Um, fluorine being more electronegative than oxygen does not follow the same pattern. We don't have those polyatomic ions. Uh, we also learned phosphate and we learned monohydrogen phosphate and dihydrogen phosphate. We can do the same thing with arsenic. ASO4 minus 3 is arsenate. And we can also do this with bismuth. BiO4 is, minus 3, is bismuthate. So by learning that phosphate is PO4 with a negative 3 charge, um, arsenic and bismuth in the same family follow the same pattern. Nitrogen is from that, that same group, but nitrogen follows a little bit different pattern, uh, again, due to the electron orientation and, and some of the other properties that you've learned in earlier chemistry studies with regard to nitrogen. So when we're learning these by family, phosphorus to arsenic to bismuth. And again, we can also have hydrogen placed with those, HASO4 minus 2, monohydrogen arsenate, H2ASO4 with a minus 1 charge, um, dihydrogen arsenate, and the same thing with regard to the bismuthates. So there's a few more polyatomic ions, and these just require memorization.
Um, very important for you to know and to be able to identify by name, and the one is, first one we're going to learn is OH minus. That's called hydroxide. CN minus is cyanide. Uh, SCN minus, or some textbooks use NCS minus, and that is thiocyanate. Uh, the inorganic way of writing this one, C2H3O2 minus, is acetate. Uh, there's also an organic way of writing that. Uh, since most of the studies, most of the classes that I teach are inorganic based, we'll stay with the inorganic way, C2H3O2 with a minus one charge, acetate. Uh, MnO4 minus by memorization is called per manganate. And if you remember the per from our per chlorate, manganese in this, like uh, much like chlorine in the perchlorate polyatomic ion, manganese is a positive seven charge uh, in the permanganate ion. Manganese being a transition metal, uh, many of those take on multiple charges. That's why we use the Roman numerals in a lot of the nomenclature that we encounter with them. So manganese in this particular polyatomic ion is a positive seven charge. Uh, another transition metal polyatomic ion that you should be familiar with is Cr2O7 with a negative two charge, and that is called dichromate, or CrO4 with a minus two charge is chromate. And the same thing there, uh, transition metal with different charges, two different polyatomic ions with that. Uh, another polyatomic ion to memorize would be C2O4 minus two, and that is called oxalate. And two final polyatomic ions that are uh, rather important for you to memorize. Also, uh, these are positive polyatomic ions, NH4 with a plus one charge, and that is the ammonium polyatomic ion. And then the next one we'll treat as a polyatomic ion, and that is Hg2 with a total charge of plus two meaning each mercury has a one charge. So as we go into further studies with nomenclature, we'll learn that actually has a, a name. It's called mercury one, but mercury one is not a single mercury with a one charge. It's actually two mercuries. That's why we're treating it uh, with our polyatomic ions, two mercuries with a total charge of positive two. So in less than 15 minutes, you can learn Nick the Camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Uh, from that, with just a little bit of background chemical knowledge, you should be able to quickly memorize the formulas and the names for approximately 50 polyatomic ions.